Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video by yours truly. It is now time to talk about our girl, Topaz, the uh, Unity CEO who likes to charge people retroactively. Even if it's your great grandpa who, wouldn't, who never paid his bills on time, she's, she's chunking that up as debt and you're going to have to pay that bill, big fella. Anyways, uh, I want to share my insight based off of everything that they've shared in the 1.4 live stream and pertaining to her kit. And hopefully we will all be on the same page as to how it works. I feel they go over things, but they, they, they explain them in a very generalized manner that may leave uh, a number of you confused. And that's why I'm here to clear up all the confusion. So let's go ahead and get into it. Topaz and Numbi are fire type characters. Yes, they are. The path of the hunt. At the start of an allied turn, if no enemy on the battlefield is inflicted with proof of death, Topaz will inflict this state on a random enemy. This is one of the more important things to, di to discuss. So this bad boy is a different kind of damage bonus from the regular damage bonuses that you get. So for an example, when you put a, a elemental sphere on and it says 38.8% damage increase, that's an additive damage bonus that's put into a particular multiplier on the formula. This one right here, the proof of debt, which says increased follow-up attack damage received by 25%. The way it is worded, it is the exact same wording as Welt and Luca's damage bonuses, which are actually vulnerability damage bonuses. So they, they go to a completely different multiplier, which means it's a much stronger multiplier given to this particular uh, follow-up attack damage. So Jing Yuen, Clara, Himiko, they are receiving a massive damage boost to their follow-up attacks from Topaz. It's actually insanely valuable. And it rises her value up for me personally because this is a future-proof type of value. Any other follow-up attack characters that come out down the line that are prevalent with the follow-up attack will receive an immense amount of damage bonus from this girl, which is crazy. Uh, so she's not just a, D a DPS, she's also a very good support for follow-up attack synergies. Thereby boosting the follow-up attack damage they receive. During battle, Numbi starts out with an initial speed and- I wanted y'all to pay attention to something that just occurred right there. Numbi just jumped up to the front. By the way, it shouldn't be Topaz and Numbi. It should be Numbi and Topaz because Numbi is pretty much doing 80% of the entirety of the kit's work. But let's go back here again. I wanted to show attack you guys this because it's received. important. During battle, her Numbi auto attack, out with an initial boom, speed. as you can see, Numbi jumped to the front. Numbi only jumps to the front when you do follow-up attacks. She just did an auto attack and he jumped to the front. Therefore, her auto attack is even considered a follow-up attack, which is wild. Numbi starts out with an okay. initial speed and acts autonomously, attacking enemies and inflicted with proof of debt. That's another thing I want to talk about too. It works just like Jing Yuen. It has a base speed value. And when you do things based off of her kit, which with him, it's action value increase, which is the best kind of speed increase in the game. It's going to move. So, but it's just like Jing Yuen. It's a separate entity from its Lightning Lord stand. And uh, when you attack people with proof of debt, it gets advanced forward. Excluding Nubby zone turns, every time an ally follow up attack hits an enemy inflicted with proof of debt, Numbi's action is advanced forward. The other thing I want to talk about is there is a distinct difference between the ult and the uh, and the passive of Numbi as a whole. Right now, if you hit somebody with proof of debt with a follow up attack from one of your allies, he gets advanced forward, as he just stated. But it gets much more easier to advance him forward when you pop her ult, which we'll get into. Seems like Numbi and Topaz share a strong bond. Mm, they make a tight unit. Which, by the way. Obviously, you want to have somebody who's applying uh, follow-up attacks very easily, like Clara's counter, easy way to, uh, uh, to apply follow-up attacks on the proof of debt target, which will enable Numbi to go more times. Uh, Kafka, people might think Kafka is not a good synergy, but she applies a follow-up attack so easily. You just basic attack with somebody and then she shoots, right? Guaranteed follow-up attack on the proof of debt target, which will enable Numbi to be advanced forward and attack. It seems right now that Numbi can attack more times than any other unit or entity in the game in a single cycle. You can advance this little dude forward so many times that he can probably attack like eight freaking times in a single cycle, given the right amount of speed. Speaking of which, Topaz's skill, difficulty pan, is able to reallocate proof of debt to a different target, allowing Numbi to immediately launch an assault and deal a set percentage of Topaz's attack as fire damage to the new target. That's the next thing I want to talk about. Um, Topaz has a very skill point friendly kit. So if you don't have anybody on the field that's an enemy that has proof of debt on their head, proof of debt automatically gets applied to their head when she goes. 
So you don't even have to use her skill to apply this proof of debt, which gives them the damage bonus, the vulnerability damage bonus. You only need to apply it when there's an elite on the field that you specifically want to receive that increased damage to get them out of there. But ideally speaking, if there's only one unit left and he doesn't have proof of debt, guess what? Proof of debt gets put on their head for free, which what I'm getting at here is a musketeer set may be a very strong option for uh, Topaz because she can just auto attack. It's considered a follow up attack, right? And generate skill points. Numbi's going to deal damage on top of that. And then your follow up attack units are going to pop off. So that's huge value just from that alone. This counts as a follow up attack. Topaz's ultimate turn a profit allows Numbi to enter the windfall bonanza state. In this state, damage and crit damage dealt by Numbi both experience an increase. This has got to be the coolest thing right here. <laughs> That's such a beautiful ult with regards to what it does. The stonks is going up. She's all about paying debt and stuff. Oh, that's hilarious. If that wasn't enough, every time an ally's basic- But yeah, hold on, let's go back because I got sidetracked there. Tech. Topaz's ultimate turn a profit allows Numbi to enter the windfall bonanza state. Mm -hmm. In this state, damage and crit damage dealt by Numbi both experience an increase for a set amount of turns that wasn't enough every time an ally's basic attack skill or ultimate hits an enemy inflicted with proof of death numby's action is additionally advanced forward so that's also important to establish this is why her ult is going to be obviously valuable to get up because before you use her ult, if you don't use her ult at all the only way to advance numby forward is by doing follow-up attacks on a enemy unit with a proof of debt on their head. That's the only way to advance the, the numby forward. But once you pop the ult, now basic attack skill in ult can also advance him forward and his, his damage is significantly amplified. So if you're running a team comp with let's say Jing Yuan for an example, and you don't have her ult up, his stand only does a follow-up attack one time per cycle, right? It's not like Kafka, where she can do a two follow-up attacks per cycle, or Clara, multiple follow-up attacks per cycle. So having her ult up with a team comp or with somebody like Jing Yuan is going to be huge because then skills and ults will also advance number before it, enabling him to deal more damage, generate more energy to Topaz, and you know just overall more DPS as a whole. After Numbi launches a set number of attacks, this effect is dispelled. Whoa, yep. Numbi's got moves. So uh, her being a hunt path character is is huge. I think speed on her is just going to be incredibly huge. You're going to potentially want her to go three times. I could see a mono pyro team being very strong with her. Uh, Asta, her, and Himiko is probably going to be an incredibly strong pyro team. And the reason being is simple. She's already a hunt path character. She's going to be pretty damn fast on her own, but then Asta is going to boost her up even quicker and if she goes three times in one turn, bro, I'm telling you, Num Numby is going to be out here sh hitting like 18 freaking times in a single cycle, which is nuts. I believe that everything possesses a soul. I believe that if you treat all living things with genuine care, regardless of whether they're human, they'll respond in kind. <laughs> Hold on to your hats, folks. Numby's not done yet. Topaz and Numby's technique, explicit subsidy, allows Topaz to summon Numby when entering a map. Numbi then automatically seeks out basic treasures and that's a nice little quality of life improvement right there. I ain't gonna lie. That's a that's a huge QOL for me. And Trotters hate having to search some damn treasure chest. Topaz right to the loot. The best part? Trotters won't be alerted to their approach. And so the first thing I thought about this doesn't even consume technique points. That's crazy because if you go into the swarm disaster with the trotter event, I wonder if you can just run around and shoot them for free and they won't move <laughs> because this little dude right here, I don't know if that's true or not, but that was the first thing that went to my head. If Topaz and Numbi enter combat after using their technique, our little warp trotter regenerates a set amount of Topaz's energy after launching their first attack. If dude, did y'all see that energy regeneration? It generates a set amount of topaz. Look at this energy, energy regeneration. They tried to like their first attack. slide it in there. Look at that. Oh my god. Bro, that's a fat amount of energy. 
If Topaz and Numbi are still in the team after winning a battle entered in this way, the team receives a small amount of additional credits up to a set daily limit. So you do get paid. You get paid with Topaz on the team. That's crazy. The above also goes for winning battles entered in this way. With so this is obviously a bit of an incentivization to like go around and clear the world map, which I never, you would never catch me doing that. But if you want to make a little bit of extra money with Topaz, you can totally do that. In the simulated universe. But instead of credits, the team receives a small amount of cosmic fragments with a chance to bag a random curio. That sounds so freaking broken, by the way. Like just putting Topaz on your team to just grind up to a spirit. You don't even have to use her when it's all said and done and you get to the end, right? But you use her as a unit to get more cosmic fragments, additional curio, and then swap her out. That's huge. <laughs> That's quite the skill set. And yeah, seems like Topaz that wraps it up. And so again, just to like summarize everything up, Topaz is essentially a unit who has a entire kit of follow-up attacks. Her basic attack is a follow-up attack, her skill is a follow-up attack, and then Numbi himself is a follow-up attack. So, and then when you do follow-up attacks with people who have the little proof of death symbol on top of their head, Numbi gets advanced forward. Then when you pop her ult, anything your allies do pertaining to dealing damage with basic skill or ult, that will advance Numbi forward as well. So what I'm getting at here is when she attacks and your allies attack and then you pop her ult, Numbi should be able to attack like, I'm not kidding, five, six, seven times, depending on the team composition you're running, or at the bare minimum, three times per cycle. And that's a ridiculous amount of damage. We, we do got to get a look at the multipliers first before we just go off and, you know, run our mouth off. But she is looking to be a very multifaceted unit that can support other follow-up attack main DPSs while dealing damage herself. Then, if I'm being honest, she's also looking like she could be a main DPS herself. But I think the best bread and butter for her is putting her on a team with a, with a main DPS like Jinyuan, Himiko, or Clara, and uh, maybe even Kafka as well because of the consistency. But yeah, those are my thoughts on uh, everything that was shown in 1.4 with Topaz. As always, I hope I brought you guys some value. Thanks for watching. Peace.